Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy Friday. Good morning, teacher. Good morning, teacher. Happy last day of regular classes for your first semester. Congratulations. You've completed your first semester. How does it feel? Tiring? <laughs> um, go ahead and activate your microphone and camera if you would good morning beach. good morning guys what are you guys drinking this morning i've got my tea in hand my green tea i'm on a green tea kick these last few weeks are you guys drinking anything um, water <laughs> water okay <laughs> water too water any coffee drinkers yeah, yeah. me too you coffee drinkers, do you like it black or do you like it with cream or sugar? Or what do you guys like? With cream and a lot of sugar. A lot of sugar, especially this early in the morning, right? A lot of sugar, yes. a lot of caffeine. <laughs> awesome. We'll get started here in a few minutes. I want to begin at 8.15 with our TOEFL listening. And... And then we'll finish, we should finish around 9 o'clock, and then we'll continue with the remaining four teams to hear what they have uh, to say about building in routines or improving the environment. And we'll conclude our class today with listening to our teams. And next Monday, I'll go ahead and let everyone know at 8 o'clock next Monday, we'll have a second TOEFL listening for... Anyone who wants it, okay? It's optional. You don't, um, you don't have to attend, but if you want a second opportunity, I'm going to go ahead and schedule that because I'm assuming at least one person will want to, uh, to do that. If needed, we'll have a third listening review on Wednesday, next Wednesday. That'll be the last, uh, that, that'll be the last opportunity. So you'll have three opportunities if you want it. They're optional to complete the TOEFL listening. And this will also include if you have any technical problems, right? So I'm, I'm hoping that no one has any technical issues, okay? But if you do, let me know. We're, you're going to have three opportunities, and um, yeah, let me know if you have any technical issues later after today's class. we got a few minutes. What's on your mind? How do you guys feel about this first semester? Do you realize, to, to the best of my knowledge, I think it's safe to say that you guys are, have completed something that probably no other group has at the university, completing a online course completely, right? At least in our major, completely online. Thank you. Yes. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, no, nothing. Uh, I'm having problems with my microphone, and I was like proving it uh, because I was talking and uh, you didn't hear anything. So I was like, teacher, teacher, teacher. Ah, I hear you now. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you uh, perfectly. What's up? Ah, uh, uh, thank you, thank you. No, nothing. I was just proving my microphone. <laughs> ah, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead and turn your microphones on. We've got a few minutes here. If you want to turn your camera on too, feel free to do so. How do you guys feel about completing this first semester all online? Anybody want to share any thoughts, reflections? Uh, I feel uh, proud of me, but I feel sad because uh, it went, it passed so fast and I I didn't realize that I I was go I'm going to 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 finish the semester so fast. And, uh, yeah, me too. I am feeling yeah. so many things. Yeah. And I I know some of you have had some some huge challenges and and let me say that you know I think um, you know I've really enjoyed having you guys in this uh, semester and I think there's something about 
going through this together, these challenges, because it's it's hard for everybody. Um, that you know, when we complete something like this, at least for me, I feel like it's it's just one of those special moments. Even though it's it's a horrible situation that we're facing, and we uh, a lot of you have been facing even additional challenges that are just uh, horrible and. Um, I just, I want to make sure that you guys know that your teachers here are, are there, here to help you. And it's really important that when you're facing challenges, that you have the confidence to approach your teachers and, and let them know that you're experiencing some challenges. And, and uh, you know, we're all here to work together and get through all of these courses, and this is same whether it's face to face or online. But there's something about facing this challenge together, right? That is going to be, uh, at least for me, it's going to be really special that we went through this and we got through it, and we made the best of it, right? We tried to get as much out of this experience as possible. Anybody else want to share any thoughts, ideas? Uh, for me, it was really difficult. <laughs> like, I don't know. I felt like, um, well, because I also saw my my siblings like working one in middle school and the other one in uh, high school, and they're having too many like worksheets and stuff to do, and I'm like what the hell, like, not even in the class we were doing all of that. I know what you mean, uh, Monse. I, my son, my oldest son, uh, is in the university. He just earned, entered. He's your age, actually, and he's he's keeping up, and it's, you know, it's a lot of work, but he hasn't, you know, he's been able to keep it up, keep up with his, his work. But my youngest son, Oliver, he's he just entered the high school, and he's just bombarded. He he's up all night, and he's just come, just doing homework all the time. I mean, so yeah, I, I understand what you're saying. I think part of it is just trying to understand how much work is involved, how to really, you know, get the the most out of the time together in online classes versus homework, and trying to find that balance. I think that's really hard when we're all not really used to this way of having a class. But I feel you. I hear you. I, like, I know exactly I know, what you're saying. I know, like, school is like this. And, for example, with us in university, of course it's going to be like that because, like, okay, it is university. But, like, in my case, I don't complain too much because, like, we have, like, online meetings too. And then you as teachers explain us very well, like, what – do we have to do but in the case of my siblings like it's like what the hell were your teachers like they just give you the work but they don't explain anything i know and, like, i don't understand i know i i know i know it's it's amazing i think it's uh yeah <laughs> it's really difficult yeah <laughs> anybody else want have any uh, thoughts ideas No one else? Teacher, I have a question. Sure. What's up? Uh, uh, where is the TOEFL audio? I can't find it. Okay, the TOEFL audio we're going to do a little bit different uh, for, for today and, and on Monday. I'm going to just play the audio over the uh, internet. All right, so um, I'm not going to make available the audio online. We'll do it through uh, sharing my screen. Okay, let's see how it goes. If you guys have some issues, uh, let me know at the end of class. Okay, send me a, a message if uh, you had some problems listening to the audio today in class in the online session. Okay, so let's okay. try that this time. And uh, I'll wait to hear from you guys afterwards if there's some, some issues. And we'll adjust accordingly if we need to. Okay? 
Yes, thank you. Anybody else have anything to share? We got a few more minutes before we jump into our listening. Uh, well, me again, teacher. I just want to ask you if do you think that we are like going back to university like face to face? Maybe, well, maybe not in January, but I don't know, maybe in March. <laughs> That's a good question, uh, Monse. I, I think um, what I've you know I haven't heard anything. You know, I'm, this is just speculation. This is just my opinion, which means absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, but um, my feeling is, this is what I've heard, that the in the U.S., they just started this week introducing the vaccine, and uh, this is the vaccine that they offered, or that they started offering last week in England, in the U.K., and uh, there's one company, Pfizer, who's producing this vaccine, you probably all know this, but they are starting this week to begin introducing the vaccine in the U.S. This same company, the same vaccine, it's my understanding that Mexico is going to begin sometime in f between February. I heard they're supposed to phase it in based on age, at least. Um, this is what I heard. And I'm sure they're going to start with doctors and healthcare workers and, and all that. But I heard that to the general public, the vaccine should be available in Mexico in Mexico sometime between February and April uh, for those who are advanced age, the elderly, those I think over 65 or something. And then maybe those at over 50 or 55, it's going to start you know, later. So my point here is my feeling is that the mass, the, 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 the public will not probably here in Mexico get, start getting the vaccine until mid-year. So my feeling, I, I personally, I would be surprised if we go back to face-to-face -face classes until maybe, I think, I guess the best case scenario, maybe in August of next year, you know, of next year. That's my feeling, right? But again, this, I don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> I mean, and I hope I'm wrong, right? I hope that we get back, we go back as soon as possible, but that's my feeling. That's just my personal opinion. But, you know, nothing obviously has been, to my understanding, nothing's been published in terms of when our university is going to start going back or, or you know, what, what we're going to even do. I haven't heard anything uh, for sure. But, yeah, that's, that's how I see it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's not the best of news. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I know. <laughs> I mean, it really is. It's horrible. I mean, I keep thinking, uh, you know, once we start going back to school, you know, how it's even going to feel. It's going to be even strange to go back after <laughs> teaching and learning online for a while. But just a weird, weird thing. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, teacher. Sure. If you haven't already, guys, make sure that you've opened up your browser. I've included the link in the post that I shared with you uh, this morning. It's called TOEFL Listening. So make sure that you've accessed, uh, accessed the link. Make sure you've opened it up in your browser. Uh, you won't have access, obviously, until 8.15, but go ahead and open it up at this time. I really want to start right on time this morning so that we have some time to hear from our teammates uh, around nine o'clock, and here are the remaining, I think, four teams that are need uh, that still need to present. All right, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, and hopefully the audio. We can get this party started. I'm going to play just a second, guys. If you could just let me know if you can hear the audio. Listening section directions. Can you hear that? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes, teacher. Great. Yes. All right. Thank you for confirming that. Uh, the audio, guys, is going to be a little bit different. It's going to give you a little bit more instructions. And so 
some of almost all of the instructions will relate to what we're doing here. There, there are a few instructions that won't apply to us simply because I'm giving you the exam questions online in a form, but I think you'll you'll get it here. It's it's basically going to start with some instructions that are more typical when you actually take the real TOEFL exam. Notice that they mention taking notes, and we've talked a lot about taking notes, different strategies. And I, we've had some di discussions. Some of us are more comfortable taking notes than others. But realize that just having them include the, in the instructions the, the idea of taking notes tells you that it is helpful, right? And if we keep practicing taking notes, that this will help us um, in the long term. All right, guys, let's go ahead and begin. Make sure that you've refreshed your browser so that you can access the TOEFL questions. All right, let's, let's go ahead and start. All right, guys, go ahead and make sure you've answered all of the questions. You filled it out completely. Go ahead and submit so that you can see your, your score. And uh, we'll be offering, uh, we'll also be taking this, uh, another TOEFL review on Monday. So uh, we'll uh, meet online as we have before on Monday at 8 o'clock to offer a second opportunity to take the TOEFL quiz. Okay, so um, we'll plan on that, and we'll probably plan another one on Wednesday of next week. Do you chair? Yes. Uh, bueno, ¿cuánto teníamos que sacar para tener 10? Okay. Uh, you have to score at least 50%. If you go into uh, our page in Notion, I'll mm -hmm. open that up. Uh, let me share my screen here so that you guys can see um, exactly what score, what kind of grade you're going to get based on the score from today's quiz. All right, so let me open up. Let me open up the... Notion page, and all of you have access, I think, to this page. If you need uh, the link, let me know. This is the page for the final TOEFL listening, and here are the scores. These are the percentage correct, right? So if you get a 50% or higher, you get a 10. A 40 to 49%, you'll receive a 9. 35 to 39%, an 8 and so on. Okay, so on the left-hand column, these are the percentage correct. This is the score that you should receive at the moment that you submit your response. Okay, so you can use this breakdown here to see where you fall in the grading scale. Alrighty. Okay, teacher, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, let's uh, get right into our team speaking uh, activity that we started yesterday. We didn't have a chance, unfortunately, to finish, so we can do that now. Uh, we listened yesterday to teams one through six, if I'm not mistaken. So we need to continue now with team seven. That is Maria, Jose, Alondra, Andrea, and Fernanda. So I'm going to see if I can go back to our handy-dandy together mode that we tried yesterday. See if I can get this going. Kind of like the dark mode myself. Let's see if we can get it. And uh, go ahead, if you could, uh, open up your microphone, and better yet, open up your video if we can see your lovely faces as we listen to Team 7. Maria Jose, Alondra, Andrea, and Fernanda. Teacher, my camera is not working. Is okay? That's okay. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay if you can't. Hello, Maria. Jose. Sure. Hello, teacher. <laughs> All right, guys, what do you think? Uh, we talked yesterday about what we can do on a daily basis. What did you guys decide? What did you talk about yesterday in terms of daily routines in ways that we can help uh, conserve the environment? What do you think? Uh, well, I think... Uh one thing that we have to, to do is like when we are, for example, eating something or maybe 
we buy something and we have the trash. Uh, uh, what the people commonly do is just like throwing throwing it away uh, on the floor. It doesn't matter. So I think we have to like keep the trash with us till we see like a container or till we get uh, arrive to our homes and and well then throw it there, no in the floor because uh, it causes a, a lot of uh, contamination. So it's pretty easy, pretty easy to do that. So I think that that's it. That's a one point. <laughs> And Fernanda, in your case, is that something that you, as your your family, is this something you've always done, or is this something that came up? Um, can you describe that a little bit? How did that happen with your only family? Uh, well, we we don't do that, <laughs> but uh, I I've seen that some uh, many people do that because when you uh, well. There were some times when we were on the on the street, uh, we see like people uh, throw the the cigarettes and oh, ay, no sé cómo se dice, las servilletas or the things on the floor, and you see how the floor is like all with with uh, different kind of trash, and then you have you are you you watch the the that people who Ay, pues los que barren, pues. <ríe> ahí, ahí, barriendo y barriendo y barriendo. Ok. All right. All right, great. Thank you for sharing that, uh, Fernanda. Anybody else uh, from Team 7? Yes, teacher. Yes. Well, we, well, I propose, well, my purpose is about the um, donate clothes because many people buy a lot of clothes. So one of the solutions could be donate clothes or maybe mm, regalarlas uh, to another person and buy in a bazaar maybe. Well, I try to do this and also, well, do or, well, do own like bags. For, for example, many people buy a lot of bags in the, the in the supermarket and well, it's the same thing. The this bag, it's like only used one one time, and well, that it's like a problem. It, it I think it's better do do or own bags. Many well, maybe with or with one skirt or um, well clothes, maybe. Yeah, you're um, you're making me think about in the U.S. of uh, goodwill, which if anyone has been to the United States, maybe you've heard of this, but it's basically a place where people donate their clothes and other people can go in and find clothes, right? So you can donate or you can find clothes uh, that people have donated. And so this is that when you're talking about donating clothes, um, I, th I started thinking about that. And also what's called hand-me-downs, hand-me-downs. So sometimes brothers and sisters will, will uh, pass on clothes that maybe they don't fit to their younger siblings, right? So these are called hand-me-downs, hand-me-downs. Okay, so yeah, I, I thought about those two. Great, thanks. Thank you for sharing, uh, Maria. Um, Andrea? Do you have any ideas, suggestions? Yes. Well, I think that in my personal case and my home, the things that we do is that we save water. We try to uh, recycle water as well when we maybe take a shower and, you know, like the um, water is stuck or something. So we put like a, a container that the water um, is in there so we can use that water for something else. We also save electricity because I see a lot of people that maybe have a uh, bad habit that is, for example, that they are do using their phones and at the same time is the television on. And I think um, we need to focus on that one thing. And if we are not watching the TV, we need to turn off the TV and just pay attention in one thing. And I also think that use reusable containers is a good solution for our water or food. And, and yeah, I think it was one of my points. 
Okay. Excellent. Excellent suggestions there. Um, anyone else from Team 7 have anything else to add? Okay. Um, to protect the environment, my family and I do different activities. For example, um, in, my fam in my family, we don't use plastic bags because um, they are very difficult to disappear in the environment. So when we go to the supermarket, we use um, fabric bags. Um, and another thing that we do is sometimes we use public transportation, for example, when we go to the school or something like that. And we turn the lights when we don't need them. And we divide the, the trash in different categories. Categories. All right. Great. Well, a lot of good ideas, a lot of good uh, recommendations. Maybe some of these we do already. Maybe some of these we should be doing. I know I'm thinking to myself the same, like, okay, I should be doing this, donating some clothes, turning off the lights more often, things like that. Um, but yeah, a lot of good ideas. Thank you very much, Team 7. Thank you for your ideas and thoughts today. You're welcome, teacher. Thanks. All right. Let's continue on with Team 8. Luis Enrique, Alexia, Jazz, Jacqueline. Feel free to open up your microphone. Better yet, if you'd like to turn on your video so we can see your lovely faces. It always makes our conversations more engaging. Team 8. Hello, Jazz. Luis. Jackie, you look like you're hidden behind the seat there. There you go. I, it's hard to see your <laughs> face. <laughs> Alexia. Okay, guys, what do you think, Team 8? What are your ideas? What are your thoughts? Uh, well... My teammates and me uh, prepared like some ways as uh, so we can take care of the environment. Uh, do you want to share your example, teammates? Um, yes. We, if we need to plant like trees to take care of the environment because it's so important for us because it gave us the oxygen to breathe for all, all of, of them, like people, animals, and other things. Uh, Luis, in your case, do you plant trees in your home? Have you planted trees? Or do you plant trees outside of your home someplace else? Mm. Cuenta macetas. Ah, okay. In your home? Yes. Okay. Great. Anybody else? Okay, so, for example, me, I try to not use plastic bags. When I go to the supermarket or to the store, my moms always use, like, a reusable bag. And she never tell them that give us uh, plastic bags. And the plastic bags that we sometimes use, we reuse them to the trash or something like that. So we always try to reuse the things to not like contaminate more. And also the electricity, we try to not use them so much. So Alexia, I'm curious. I remember when Walmart stopped using bags, right? Or most grocery stores basically stopped using plastic bags, kind of forcing us to bring our own bags. I'm curious in your situation with your family, um, did that have an impact on you as a family or did you already bring your own bags before the supermarkets stopped using their own trash bags? Mm. <laughs> Actually, the first time we forget and we have to, like, take the things on our hands. Yeah. And, but, yeah, the other things we bring back or, or back, reusable, pla where? The reusable bag. So, yeah. All right. We know our 
like acostumbrados. Mm -hmm. Not used to it, right? All right, mm -hmm. anybody else? Well, I consider some ways to take care of the environment. The first one is um, don't throw garbage. If you have, I don't know, any bag or yeah, something like that. Um, I consider that the people should not throw the garbage in the floor or in the street because the people cause it a lot of damage to the planet. And I consider another that I think it is also important um, is um, 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 the when you consume the energy, if you are not using the energy or well, it's important to turn off the lights if you are not using them because if you are not using them it only consumes the energy and well i think that <laughs> so i'm curious team eight uh all of your ideas all of your good suggestions about what we can do on a day-to-day -day basis to improve the environment i'm curious how much of what you do already came from your family, came from your discussions that you had with your family, or how much of your ideas came from outside of your family that influenced your ideas that made you do what you do now today? Any ideas there? Uh, wait, did you? <laughs> I have left my example. Well, my example was uh, that you have to separate the trash into different, like, can trash. Uh, for example, plastics in one bag and paper and cardboard in another and glass in another. And put in practice the arts rule, you know, that is reduce, recycle and reuse. And for example, in my house, we always separate the trash in different bags. And you may think that used bags is like worse for the environment because they are made of plastic. But in my house, we use a special type of bags that are made of biodegradable material. So it's good for the environment. Okay, so yeah, those are, those are great ideas. Um, did you, do you guys have, does that come from your family? Were these some discussions that you guys had with your families? Or were you influenced by maybe what you learned outside of your family, maybe from school or from... Uh, social media. Any any um, thoughts? Well, the most with me came from my family because they like tell me in the case what should I do. So yeah, most of my family or the radio things like that. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Well, a lot of good ideas, guys. Uh, thank you for sharing, Team 8. Thank you for your participation. All right, let's move on to Team 9. Sigrid, Gabby, Alonso, Maria de la Cruz. Feel free to open up your microphone. Feel free to turn on your video if you have a webcam connected. Hello, Sigrid. I don't know if I can hear you. Alonso, hello, Gabby. Who are we missing? Hello, teacher. Maria de la Cruz. I don't know if she's here today. Um, yeah, what do you guys think? What are your ideas? What are your thoughts? Go right ahead. Whenever you're ready. Um, Sigrid's microphone is like... They had some problems. Okay. So mm -hmm. what do you think, Gabby? Uh, mm, I don't know. Uh, 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 wait, okay. Um, um, well, the, uh, this has been 
um, a common topic. Uh, but I, I, I never know what to say. <laughs> um, I'm always like very lost in this in this topic uh, because sometimes I. Um, oh God. Okay. <laughs> I do some, I will say like bad actions, but I I didn't realize it, and I think that it, that the uh, this not only happens to me, um, because sometimes we left the um, what? Uh, okay, the water flow um, while we're brushing our our teeth or while we're taking a shower, and and we and we don't realize how bad is it and well um here in my house um <laughs> it is complicated because my mom always says you have the you you're you're, uh, you're using this and if i say no she um unplugs it and i'm like what 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 and <laughs> and, and it is like uh, uh, I didn't understand uh, why she used to da do that because <clears throat> now I did now I do it <laughs> with my sister, but yeah <laughs> uh, yeah um until then I I I was able to to realize that it was not for because she wanted to is because um we have something to to protect. Well, can to protect. Right. We have a responsibility, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, I understand your conflict there. Like the, the idea of convenience, things we get used to doing. Sometimes it's difficult at the beginning, right? All right. Anybody else? Alonso or Sigrid, any thoughts? Uh, well, they think me. <laughs> Um, I was thinking of a problem of, well, I think it's not a problem that uh, many times we can put in the highlights because it is not very mentioned, but I want to talk about the, well, the great consumers of the clothes, like the fast fashion. And I think it's uh, another another industry that makes a lot of pollution because the this industries make a lot of clothes and it's like well, good because it's right it's fast fashion and these clothes tends to to have a low of i don't know how to say como durabilidad. <laughs> durability mm -hmm. durability thank you and for and for example, well, um, these these clothes um, um, produce a lot of pollution. And for example, then what I well, and because they are um, they are in tendency, the people wait so much, and that that makes a. Well, with the consumers and, and all this, um, makes a, a lot of trash in the world. And an, an alternative, for example, in my house, well, I think in very Mexican houses, are that uh, if you have a, a big brother or a big sister, the, <laughs> the brother pass, pass, your clo pass his clothes and it's a good alternative of, for example, well, the people who who buy his, well, his, his clothes in, uh, I don't know who to say, bazares, <laughs> too, mm -hmm. because it's, um, I, sorry, I, I, am, I am nervous. You're, you're doing because, fine, you're doing fine. <laughs> the clothes are... Well, are all clothes and with uh, good durability. Yeah, um, when you're talking about Alonso, like um, like a bazaar, right? Uh, we have a term called the flea market, and a flea market is really similar to a bazaar. It's basically people going out 
someplace, not in the street, but usually a designated place out in public, and they sell their stuff, right? So they'll bring their stuff and they'll sell it. Um, it's not exactly the same as a bazaar. I mean, the ones bazaars that I've seen are uh, usually a designated place by one person, but a flea market usually is, it's almost like uh, the Linea de Fuego, kind of like that, where people bring their stuff and they they sell their stuff, right? So, mm -hmm. uh, and clothes, of course, uh, is a one popular article type of item that people like to uh, to get rid of, whether they sell it or give it away, right? Uh, in Goodwill, typically people will just give it away, right? So Goodwill, people will just donate clothes Flea market, people go to sell their used clothes. And usually hand-me-downs are like what Alonso is talking about. Big brother, big sister hands it down to their younger brothers and sisters. And then the younger brothers and sisters get really upset because they don't get their own clothes and it's a hand-me-down, right? And they don't like it. They want to get new clothes, right? So it's a conflict. This is kind of what Gabby was talking about. It's like there's a conflict about convenience, what we're used to, and then also realizing, well, what can we do, right, to help conserve the environment? All right, guys, uh, good ideas. Thank you for sharing. No worries, Sigrid. I know we have problems <laughs> sometimes with technology, uh, so no worries. All right, guys, thank you for thank your you participation. Sure. Thank you, Team 9. Uh, last team, Team 10. We have Mirna, Sana, Monica, Nicole, go ahead and activate your microphones. Go ahead and turn on your webcams. Hello. Hello, Hello Monica. Hello, Susie. Whenever you're ready, guys. Okay. Well, um, I want to start telling you some of the things that we discuss in my team. Uh, we start discussing the consequences of the damage in the environment, like the contamination of the ocean, the deterioration in the ozone layer, uh, there are pollution, and I think that those are facts um, that affects not only the quality of our lives, also affects uh, the other um, species because we're destroying their habitats and we're... Mm, destroying also the natural resources that we have. So um, we mentioned some little and very easy actions that maybe my uh, classmates mentioned before, like save electricity and water, uh, try to avoid to use the car, plant a tree. Um, I don't know, for example, in my family, we paint the walls on white so we can um, spend less money and also we can uh, use the natural light. Um, other thing that we do, for example, my aunt, um, she makes composta. Um, I don't know how to say it. Um, compost. And mm -hmm. Compost. Um, so we gave her the, the organic... Um, oh, the organic trash <laughs> and she gave us the the campus so we can use them in our garden and it's it's all <laughs> i don't know if my classmates want to share their opinion <laughs> yes um another alternative it could be that you can go alone or with your friends however you want and to pick up trash from streets first i sorry <laughs> for example and uh, when i was in high school and uh, one or two saturdays at the semester and uh, all the school um walk around the streets and we collected uh trash and then when we arrived to the school um we collected in containers so i think if most of us uh, do it almost i know sorry <laughs> uh, at least um one or two two times a month or or a year we can uh, help the environment with or i don't know how to say it i need to let it yeah okay anyone else I 
I think that a great idea also can be when you go to a restaurant or um, or somewhere to buy food, uh, you can bring your own metal straw or even your own plate or glass. Uh, I think it's a, a good idea, but we need to lack so much good intention to do this. And also, I think that it seems like a small idea, but I think if we all did 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 it, we could make a big difference. That we need to to have a like a good intention to do that. Mm. Okay, uh, Mirna, do you have anything else to add? Yes. Well, <clears throat> um, I think that when we are in our home in the day, we can have the lights off because, well, I have read that the electricity <coughs> light is very damaging to the environment because um, I think that is produced by mm, thermal power plants and they burn in fossil and things like that and maybe they produce radioactive waste and for example many i don't know a lot of birds are attracted to the lights of the city in the night and if they i don't know how how can i say this yet or say this bien they mm. So this bien, <laughs> uh -huh. they, they alter their, their migratory cells, you know, and maybe they can die in the city. So I think that we can, well, let's try to not turn on so many lights during the day because we can take advantage of the sunlight. Yeah, and that's all. A lot of good ideas here, and some of the things I'm thinking about, um, and I, I try to compare like when I was in the United States with some of the things that you're talking about. A lot of them are sim similar. We have in the United States this idea of adopting a street. You know how you can adopt children, right, and, and families, right? You might There are adoption agencies where you adopt a, a person. But you, you can also adopt a street. And what this means is you say maybe a company or, a, or an organization will adopt a section of a street and they're responsible for picking up the trash, making sure that the street is clean. So you'll see people maybe in the middle of the, in the median, if there's like a grass area in the middle of the street or on the sides of the streets. Wow. And uh, we... Uh, we can look at adopting a street to pick up the trash around the streets and um, and uh, keeping it clean, basically, right? And so people volunteer and are responsible for making sure that there's not a lot of trash out in the streets. But I think Nicole really summed up really this whole idea about what we can do, the small things that we can do, and the impact that they can make. In fact, that idea is, I think, the main idea, the main takeaway as we complete this semester, as today is our last day of class, really looking at the things that we do day to day and the impact it can have not only on ourselves, but others, right? Um, thank you, uh, Team 10, for sharing your ideas, a lot of wonderful ideas and perspectives. And uh, yeah, good ideas. Thank you. You're welcome, teacher. You're welcome, teacher. So, uh, to finish, today is our last day of regular classes. As I mentioned before, on Monday at 8 o'clock, we will continue uh, with another opportunity for those who want to take the TOEFL listening. We'll have that. Uh, on Monday. It's optional, okay? You don't have to attend, but if you want to, that's that's fine. And I want to just spend a few minutes really closing today's class, letting everyone know that I really enjoyed having each one of you in class. 
Um, it's it's always uh, enjoyable for me to teach Prope because students are just entering into the university with a lot of different perspectives, a lot of uh, potential, and I hope if you take any way, anything away from this class is the importance of those small routines that you do. This, the things that you do each day really make who you, who you are and who you will become. And I hope in this class, listening and speaking, especially, for example, the, the podcast, which I've, again, really enjoyed listening to your podcast throughout the, the semester, I hope that you guys continue uh, either with the podcast or some kind of routine where you're constantly practicing your skills, your listening and your speaking skills and reading and writing, your grammar. But try to find a routine. Find those uh, maybe it's dedicating a certain amount of time throughout the day to either read a book, read your favorite online uh, social media, but something that is in English so that when you look at your time here in the university, when you complete your BA, you look back and you say you really did the best that you could, that you tried to get as much out of uh, this experience as possible. So... Um, I want to leave it open if anyone has any closing thoughts, any opinions, comments, if you would like to share, feel free to jump right in. Go ahead and open up your video if you want, your microphone. Any closing thoughts? No, nada más que los quiero mucho a todos. <laughs> Absolutely. Anybody else have any closing ideas, closing thoughts as we finish uh, the semester? Well, I can say that thank you for being an awesome teacher. Thank you for being awesome students, for sure, for sure. All right, as I we've talked about before, uh, we've gone through some challenges. It's been, it's not ideal to have class like this. Unfortunately, we're not, we weren't able to have class face to face. But um, for one, for me, I really enjoyed having you guys. And um, again, next week we'll go ahead and conclude for this uh, semester. I'm going to include in Teacher Ease our last assignment for the podcast. And so we'll have one more podcast for this week. And we will uh, have a grade for your e-portfolio. Today, I'm going to go through and leave comments, create some feedback. I'll, I'll share this in Microsoft Teams to those who completed their e-portfolio that I have not made comments on. Our last day to complete the e-portfolio will be next Wednesday. So uh, continue working on your e-portfolio if you are still working on that. Make sure you check the checklist to see what to include in your ePortfolio. And make sure that you're reaching out to me if you are having any questions or challenges in creating your ePortfolio. Again, I want to encourage all of you to continue developing and maintaining your ePortfolio uh, going forward, right? So that you also include other classes and your other experiences in your online space. All right, guys. Any other final comments? Me, teacher. Yes. I think that I, I want to say something. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I just want to thank you uh, for everything, for supporting me and support uh, all of us. And, well, you know about my situation, and I want to, to thank you again because you are so... Hey, comprensible. Mm -hmm. And... Thanks for uh, letting me to uh, do the works the uh, más tarde. <laughs> oh, and well, because no, mm, not all the teachers do that, so uh, it's very important important to me for me that you. Uh, ay, que usted sea así. La verdad, muchísimas gracias. Lo quiero mucho. No, de nada, Fernanda. Um, and I think the main thing here, at least for me, I can speak for me personally, 
that if the main thing is that you guys are communicating to your teachers, right? And so for me personally, it helps to know if you guys are going through some challenges to at least try to do what I can. A lot of times I can't do much, but sometimes I can. So the main thing is that um, you guys are communicating with your uh, with your teachers. So you guys are going to be teachers one day, and you uh, are going to reflect on, well, how are you going to treat your learners, and how what kind of decisions are you going to make? And so one of the things that you're going to learn through taking classes with us is you're going to be evaluating yourself, thinking, okay, I like this, I don't like that, and you're you're going to be creating your own philosophy for teaching. And so I hope that uh, that you see, especially in this situation where we're all facing challenges, of course, some more than others, but the importance of communicating and reaching out and making sure that all of you are getting equal opportunities to participate and interact and work individually and with your classmates and so on. So um, uh, I just, again, want to to uh, conclude today by really saying that I've enjoyed having you guys in class. And it looks like next semester I'm scheduled, unfortunately, to teach another class. Um, so uh, I want to make sure that you guys are aware if you need anything from me, even if I'm not your teacher, if you need some, if you have questions or if I can help in any way, uh, make sure you know that I'll be happy to do what I can and uh, keep in contact if you need some something from me. All right. All right, my friends. I think we'll stop there for today. And uh, again, we'll see probably some of you, if not all of you, I don't know, haven't uh, you decide, uh, but on Monday we will have the online TOEFL uh, review. And, yeah, we'll stop there for today. All right, guys, thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. And if I don't see you, enjoy your break. Be safe. I'm wishing everybody to be safe. Your families are safe. And um, we'll talk to you soon. All right, thanks, guys. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Thank you, teacher. Well, teacher, if you actually need something for uh, uh, of us, you can you can ask it if without hesitating. Ah, okay. I appreciate that, Fernanda. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Merry Christmas, teacher. Merry Christmas to you guys. Happy holidays. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Happy Hanukkah. And happy New Year, teacher. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.